Hello everyone and welcome to Edusearch Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we will continue our discussion on applied anatomy of stomach. In the previous part, we saw the basic parts of stomach, the surfaces, the curvatures and we also saw the blood supply, lymphatic drainage as well as the nerve supply with some discussion on the applied aspects of why to know these anatomies in detail, right? So today we are going to discuss the relations of stomach with the surrounding organs, how it is attached to liver, the spleen, right? The basic anatomy that you know, how all that makes sense into understanding the very complex structure which is known as lesser sac, okay? And the foramen of Winslow. So let us understand the very basic attachments of stomach, okay? So as we all know, the Stomach is very intimately related to the liver, which is anterior to the fundus, okay? And the spleen, which is on one side of the stomach. So, the peritoneal attachments, if you want to understand it in detail, you can look at the embryological development of these organs. But very simply, if you want to understand anatomy and use it practically in surgery, we have to understand that all these organs are attached to each other, okay? They are related to each other by some attachments. So, gastrohepatic ligament, as the name suggests, attaches the stomach to the liver. So, gastrohepatic ligament. These are all basically peritoneal folds, right? The other is hepatoduodenal ligament, which attaches the D1 part to the liver. Now, when we combine the gastrohepatic ligament and the hepatoduodenal ligament, it is basically the lesser omentum. Coming on the other side, the greater curve, the attachment to the diaphragm is the gastrophrenic ligament. The attachment to the spleen is the gastrosplenic ligament, which contains the short gastrics basically. Then you have the entire greater omentum, which is on the greater curvature of the stomach. As we all know, greater omentum has four layers, two anterior layers, two posterior layers. The anterior layers attach to the stomach and the posterior layers attach to the mesocolon, colon and then to the lower border of the pancreas, right? So basically that is how the peritoneum flows. Now going to the lesser sac, what is the lesser sac? So the peritoneal cavity anterior to the stomach attachments to the liver is the greater sac, okay? So, the major abdominal cavity that we see once we enter the abdomen and open the peritoneum is the greater sac. The peritoneal cavity posterior to these attachments is the lesser sac. So, in very simplified terms, okay, rather than going into complex textbook descriptions, what is anterior to these attachments is the greater sac. So, once we open the layers of the abdominal wall and the peritoneum, what we see is the greater sac, okay? And the cavity posterior to these attachments is the lesser sac. So, when we want to know the anterior surface of lesser sac now, we know that it is posterior to these attachments. So, from above downwards, the structures that we saw, liver, essentially the caudate lobe of the liver, lesser omentum which includes the gastrohepatic ligament and the hepatoduodenal ligament, the posterior inferior surface of stomach and the greater omentum in the anterior two layers, right? So, from above downwards from the previous diagram, the anterior surface of lesser sac is very simple now, okay? Now, going into the concept, like I said, the greater sac is outside. This is the way I used to remember it and I used to teach it in the class that imagine a fish, okay, and the different parts of the fish will help you in understanding the lesser sac. So, imagine that this fish is in the lesser sac, okay. So, how do we understand the different parts? The spleen is on the left side of the fish, right? The liver is on the right side. So, you can now start recreating the abdomen, imagining this fish, okay? The caudate process or the caudate lobe, as we can see anatomically, will be there in this part of the liver, right? The first part of duodenum and the pyloric part of the stomach, we have already seen. So, we are recreating that also here, okay? As we know, the liver embraces the vena cava. So, behind the liver and going inferiorly is the inferior vena cava. 
and on the side of vena cava and below just below the upper part of liver is the right adrenal right so caudate process of the liver is anterior to the cava right so that is the anterior part whereas inferior vena cava and right adrenal is posterior to the caudate and liver right so that part is the posterior part and the hepatoduodenal ligament is anterior to the caudate like if you have remembered the caudate anatomy if you don't we have a video on it you can have a look but the portal plane is anterior to the caudate and the cava is posterior to the caudate right that is what we are showing here the hepatoduodenal ligament basically contains the mickey mouse configuration right if you have forgotten that mickey mouse configuration is an ultrasound image okay. this is the orientation of the hepatic artery the bile duct in green and the portal vein in blue in the hepatoduodenal ligament right the hepatoduodenal ligament contains these three structures in this configuration okay so the bile ducts to the right hepatic arteries to the left and portal veins posterior okay so this is the normal configuration seen in most of the cases unless there are variations in these structures. This is known as Mickey Mouse configuration seen on ultrasound commonly asked question. This is how the structures are present in hepatoduodenal ligament. So now if you see on all four sides, okay, you have the caudate process or the caudate lobe of the liver superiorly. If the person is standing, okay, you have the hepatoduodenal ligament anteriorly, you have the cava and right adrenal posteriorly, and you have the first part of duodenum, and sculpting the first part of duodenum will be the common hepatic artery. This structure that you have formed now, bounded medially towards the stomach by the gastrohepatic ligament, which we have already seen in the previous slide, right? So now if you imagine this structure, this gap that is present between these four is the foramen of Winslow or the epiploic foramen. Now this orientation is very important to understand. So just like fish mouth, okay, it is the mouth or the opening of the lesser sac. This is the only opening of the lesser sac that you can get without cutting any structure, okay. So this opening is guarded by four different walls, right? And these are the four walls that you can understand very logically if you have followed this video till now. And this is the area which is known as foramen of Winslow or epiploic foramen, which is like the mouth of this fish. Why we remember the fish? Because this is a very important area, okay? And if you want to enter into this area, why very commonly asked question is Pringles maneuver. What is Pringles maneuver? You want to clamp the hepatoduodenal ligament like this dotted blue circle. How do you clamp the hepatoduodenal ligament? By passing a finger in the direction of the blue arrow through the foramen of Winslow. For that you may have to open the gastrohepatic ligament. So we cut the gastrohepatic ligament pass a finger across the hepatoduodenal ligament, then pass a loop across it and clamp it. If you clamp the hepatoduodenal ligament en toto, it is known as Pringles maneuver, which is a life-saving maneuver in cases of major bleeds from the liver or the hepatic artery. And very commonly asked question, that is why this concept is being described. Okay, the lesser sac. So, Yes, just like a fish which has only one opening, the lesser sac also has only one opening and which is towards the liver through the foramen of Winslow, it communicates with the greater sac. Now you would imagine why a fish then, we could have kept it simple, but the fish helps you in understanding the different parts of lesser sac, which is the superior recess, like one of the wings of the fish and the inferior recess and you also have a splenic recess which is like the tail of the fish right so this is how it makes it very easier for you to understand the superior recess inferior recess and the splenic recess again represent parts of the fish okay so four important parts in the lesser sac you can imagine a fish lying in the lesser sac and this is very easy to understand 
Now going anatomically, the posterior wall of the lesser sac will be formed again by very simple understanding of the anatomy. As we all know, the stomach rests on different organs from below upwards. Like I said, the posterior two layers of the greater omentum will be posterior to the lesser sac. They go through the colon and attach towards the pancreas. So transverse colon, transverse mesocolon and pancreas. This is how the layer goes and then left kidney and left suprarenal gland, okay, towards the diaphragm. So, this is how you can remember the posterior surface of lesser sac, basically the posterior relations of stomach. So, the lower three, the transverse colon, transverse mesocolon, pancreas, left kidney, left suprarenal gland and diaphragm are all the structures that form the stomach bed and you add spleen and splenic artery to it. This is basically a very commonly asked question, the organs and the parts forming stomach bed. Okay. So, posterior surface of lesser sac is basically the stomach bed except greater omentum posterior two layers and spleen and splenic artery because spleen and splenic artery as we saw the fish is outside the lesser sac. Right. So, if you remember the fish Lying between liver and spleen, you will never make an error of putting spleen as posterior surface of lesser cell, right? So, a lot of questions have been answered in this very simple discussion. Now, going into the recesses, the superior recess is behind the lesser omentum and liver as you already saw, also known as the vestibule of lesser cell. The inferior recess is between the anterior and posterior layers of greater omentum. And the splenic recess is between the gastrosplenic and the splenorenal ligament. So, very simple to understand now. Just imagine the fish. Superior recess is the superior fin, inferior recess and the splenic recess is the tail of the fish. Foramen of Winslow is the mouth of the fish. You have already seen the relations of foramen of Winslow. We have already seen the importance of Pringle manure, how you can pass your finger through the foramen of Winslow. Another important point for foramen of Winslow is the wall of collections of pancreatitis, pseudocyst, worn, wall of necrosis, all of them commonest site is the lesser sac. And if it has formed in the lesser sac, your approach through the splenic window or through the foramen of Winslow or opening the stomach and entering the lesser sac. Everything depends on your understanding of this anatomy on the scan, right? Also, understand that it is an important site for internal hernia. And now that you know the boundaries of foramen of Winslow, you know that there is no way that you can cut any of these structures. So, other than cockerization, the other way of reducing these hernias is to enter the lesser sac push the intestine through the recesses after removing the contents and decompressing the intestines, right? So, very commonly asked question, foramen of Winslow, this simple slide gives you all the information that you need and this is a very important concept of lesser sac as well as foramen Winslow that you need to remember for life if you are going to do surgeries in these areas. Thank you.